It is a beautiful Sunday. Grass is mowed. I did that yesterday. A little oak tree. That fire pit's also going to be changed. I'm going to get rid of the rocks. They're kind of sinking. They crack. I'm going to get rid of those. My dad gave me that metal, uh, that metal object back there, which uh, will be a little bit safer too, since the fire is a little close to the house. But that's really the best place to put it, unless you want to put it in the middle of the woods. Which I do have a burn pit and a clearing back there, which you've seen in older previous videos. Cinnabon's sleeping inside, otherwise he'd be out here with me. I don't want to disturb him, he sleeps a lot. So, I'm enjoying a nice cup of hot chocolate out here. I always mix it heavy on the chocolate side, of course. In this video, I wanted to explain Cinnabon's tipped or cut ear. A lot of people ask about that. It's one of the first things I notice about Cinnabon, and that's by design. When when their ears are cut like that, they want people to notice it for a specific specific reason, which I'll get into later in this video. But first, I want to show you just a little bit of basement playtime, right? That's kind of fun. Hey, dude. Want to try out your box? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I put my boxes on top of your box. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, we can't play too hard though. Oh, <laughs> oh. whoa. Good idea. All those who suggested putting multiple different shaped holes in the box. Is this your favorite box, little buddy? Is this your favorite box? Mm-hmm. Whoa, I'm too strong. Here, I'll hold it for you. There's your carrier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a Hobby Lobby bag. I think that's what it is. <laughs> this is not entirely stable. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What a cutie you are. What a cute little kitty you are, yes. Oops. I should figure out how to stabilize this. Maybe put some blocks inside there. <laughs> oh. Hmm? You're just going to relax in the cold concrete now, hmm? Oh, good boy. Good boy. Wow. Want to go upstairs, little buddy? Want to go upstairs? Oh. Okay. Wow, yeah, he didn't plop down in the corner like he normally does. You want to relax now? You probably should relax, right? You just ate all that wet food. Yeah, don't want you to overdo it. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's going for seconds, huh? Kind of cool out here today, which is nice. I'll take it. We'll let Cinnabon get back to his meal. You comfy, little buddy? Yeah? Sometimes I answer me in his sleep. So I wanted to take a moment and talk about Cinnabon's clip ear. 
I get asked this quite often, and I've explained it before, but I thought I would put it in the video title to kind of put some of the uh, talk to rest. Now, um, some have suggested it was torn off or frostbite. Um, in fact, that can happen, especially with cats that are outside a lot. But with him, and when I first when he first came around, he wouldn't really let me like look at his ear very closely, but now he does. He doesn't mind me handling, handling him. But what it was is Cinnabon was part of something called Trap, Neuter, and Release. So when Cinnabon was a stray, feral, whatever you want to call it, abandoned, he had no home, no family that I know of. He maybe ran away. We don't, we'll never know probably. So he was captured at one point before he was neutered, of course. He was captured by probably a hunter, maybe a farmer, and whoever the individual was, thank goodness, instead of you know hurting him or killing him, brought him to a vet or some facility that specializes in cats, or perhaps he was caught just by, you know, just some random person. Um, maybe somebody noticed him around and caught him, brought him to the vet, they checked him out. When he was at the vet, he must have not have been neutered, and then they neutered him, and then they released him back to where they found him. So it's called TNR, it stands for Trap Neuter Release. So they trapped the cat. They bring him to a vet or some facility authorized to do the job or experienced to do it. They neuter the animal and then they release them where they found them. So the some of you may say that's kind of mean, but what it does is it, is it prevents more uh, cats like him, prevents wild or feral cats. It reduces their population humanely because you really don't want a lot of cats running around in most cases because they don't have a very long lives when they're out in the wild, when they're strays or feral, you know, unless they're like a barn feral or have like a, a place where they can return and get food and care when needed, when needed. So they can, the, the idea is they trap them, they neuter them, they release them to where they found them so they can live out the rest of their life without procreating and creating more cats that are going to be through a same hard life. You know? So that's pretty much it. When I brought him to the vet, I had them check out his ear and they said oh yeah this is for sure done surgically you can see it's fairly straight hey buddy they're showing off your ear sorry i know it's a sore subject for you but you can see it's pretty straight yeah for the most part what a good little kitty you are you tired little buddy hmm okay i'll stop petting you but yeah, so that's pretty much it. The cat will live the rest of his life without reproducing and creating other kittens and other cats that are going to go through similar hardships. So it's nice because there are places, unfortunately, that just shoot at wild, feral cats. And cats can be problems in certain areas. They reduce bird populations, which I really don't care about. I'm not a big fan of most birds. No, but you are because you take them out, don't you? I do like certain birds, but... I haven't really noticed an issue around here of them taking out birds. But when there's areas full of feral cats, that can be an issue. Sometimes uh, feral cats are introduced intentionally to help with mice and rat problems, especially in big cities like Chicago. There's feral cat populations that are cared for, uh, you know, minimally, because there's only so much you can do for ferals. You can't really pet them. But uh, they just kind of uh, run around town taking out mice and rats. So, I mean, I think that's how cats became domesticated uh, you know, settlers were you know, having issues with rats and whatever, they spread disease. And like, hey, these cats uh, take care of rats. They're fairly easy to take care of. They're pretty chill. And as kittens were born, they would probably get them used to being around people. So that's, I think that's my understanding of cats being domesticated. But they've been domesticated far less than dogs, uh, which is kind of funny. But that's that. If you're wondering why he has a cut ear like that, I didn't do it. Um, I didn't have it done. It's just how he came. That's how I saw him. I noticed it pretty early on. It's designed for people to see it so he doesn't get captured again. That's why they cut the ear off. So it's a marking. To, it's a universal sign. It says this cat has already been trapped and neutered and released. Please leave him alone and let him carry on. So that's what we're going to do. Except that he's mine now. He hangs out a lot. So he's he's definitely... I would consider my cat, as you all know. You know, I guess bringing him to the vet, does that make it official? No, I don't think so. A lot of people think that, but he comes over almost every day, if not every day. And when I'm here, he stays inside, and I let him stay inside by himself sometimes, too. 
and he spends the night sometimes, but last night he didn't want to. He wanted outside. He ran to that door and he left and then I checked back every half an hour and he was gone. He was somewhere far away, probably hanging out with other kitties, right? You're hanging out with your girlfriend again? Well, he's pleading the fifth on that, which is admirable. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a terrific rest of your weekend or week, whichever time it is or day. I hope it's a good one. Bye-bye.